This is the Bamboo Lab AMS. Is it the future for multicolor and multi material 3D printing? Or is it just a waste of money? There is no denying that Bamboo Lab has grabbed the 3D printing market and given it a good old shaker. And part of the reason for that was the automatic material system, or the AMS. In this video, we're going to give you the full rundown on the AMS and its pretty impressive features, our own experiences using it for the past six months before getting onto the great big elephant in the room, that poop. Firstly, what is the AMS? As I said earlier, AMS is short for Automatic Material System, which pretty much sums it up. This swanky looking bit of kit is designed to make printing with multiple different colours or materials fully automated, with a whole host of added benefits which we'll get to a bit later. Inside the AMS we have quite a lot going on. There's room for four standard size spools of filament which are turned during printing with the help of these rollers front and back. We also have four feeders at the front here which will pull your filament through to the print head when chosen. Now there are also a couple of additions I really like in here. Firstly, these desiccant slots to help keep your filament dry. The AMS does come with some desiccant pouches when you buy it, but my advice would be get rid of those and get some reusable beads that fit nicely in there. I also love that the whole AMS can be sealed with this lid and then the catches, making it supposedly airtight just to help keep that filament dust free and dry. The outside of the AMS for me hits the same as the Bamboo Lab X1. Both machines feel robust and in my opinion are by far the best looking options out there, with all the plugs, tubes and ugly bits hidden around the back. So, how does it work? Well, once you follow the easy steps to install the AMS onto your printer, all you need to do is choose four materials or colours you want to start printing with and load them up. Each time you load a filament in, you can click this tab here and choose the colour and type of material. This then relays it back to Bamboo Studio Slicer so you can see what you've got loaded in at any one time. If you're partial to using Bamboo Lab's own filament, they do have RFID tech on them, so the AMS will automatically know what filament and colour you're loading up. It will even tell you when you're running low on that filament. Clever, right? Now, we mostly print in PLA or PETG, but if you do dabble with other materials like ABS or ASA or even carbon, the AMS can handle these as well. The only difference is when loading the filaments up, you have to select from the drop down the type of material you're putting in it. Just remember, you need to swap the build plate to match the material you're printing. Because we don't do it that much, we'd love to know what your experiences are printing with different materials in the AMS, like ABS or ASA, or even just your experiences in general with the AMS in the comments below. But what about everyone's flexible friend? Well, this is my first little issue with the AMS. It doesn't support TPU, or any flexible material in fact. Now, I get it there are very good reasons why the AMS can't support TPU. Mainly because it's too soft and retraction or pulling of the filament would likely mean it clogs the whole system up. This doesn't mean you can't print TPU, you just need to use the single spool holder on the back. I would also suggest getting one of these handy tube splitters which make loading up the TPU way easier. But it's still a little bit of a faff to be honest. Once you've picked your favourite filaments to print with, you can hop into Bamboo Studio and play around with a few of the integrations between the AMS and the slicer. Remember earlier when we input all that information for each filament into the printer? Well, now by hitting the Sync AMS button here, it will automatically tell you what you have in each slot including material type and colour. So as long as you remember to punch those details in when loading up your filaments outside of the printer, you'll never be second guessing what's ready to go. This is really handy if you're like us and your printers are out in a workshop or a garage or somewhere away from you. The process of selecting a model and painting it in Bamboo Studio is pretty slick. You can explode a model into objects and paint them separately or just freehand with a mouse or tablet. I would definitely recommend using a tablet for this. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the painting side of things, that's another video for another day, so remember to hit subscribe below so you don't miss that one. Once you hit the print button in the slicer you'll get a little prompt box which will show you the colours you've painted your model and the colours in the AMS. The slicer is clever enough to match these as best possible, but if it hasn't you can just click on the drop down boxes and do it manually yourself, even if you just fancy a different colour. Flicking into the device page gives us some pretty cool features from the AMS. Firstly, this little thermometer symbol here is your humidity gauge. The AMS has a built-in hygrometer and if your symbol is orange or red, 
you probably need to be drying out or replacing the desiccant beads inside. I'd say that the desiccant beads alone have been plenty for us to keep our filaments dry for a good stretch of time. You've also got this little gear icon, which takes you to a selection of AMS settings. The first three of these are great, if you're using Bamboo's own filament, because they will read the filament information and update it where needed, and even let you know how much you've got left. But it works on that RFID tech they have. But this last feature here, the AMS Auto Switch filament, is like the holy grail of features. Basically, if you run out of a certain filament, the AMS will automatically switch across to another slot with the same filament type and color in. Genius. This feature has been huge for us. We were constantly left with tiny amounts of filament on reels, not wanting to risk putting on an overnight print or it running out, but this completely stops that issue. If you need a little more info or some pointers on the AMS, then you also have this guide button, which will take you straight into the Bamboo Wiki page and it has pretty much everything on it you'd need to troubleshoot or learn about the AMS on there. Now that's the theory behind it, but does it actually all work? We've been using the AMS pretty much every day for the last six months and for the most part it's been reliable and the convenience of the features I've just been through have been an incredible time saver. Like having lots of different filaments loaded and ready to go every morning. But there are a couple of issues which have really bugged me whilst using the AMS. Firstly, the compatibility of various different types of spools. With pressure being put on 3D printing and filament companies to become more eco-friendly, cardboard spools are becoming more and more popular, with even the biggest companies like Polymaker using these as standard. And I definitely back this move to cardboard spools. After all, every little helps. So the fact that we can't use these in the AMS seems a strange decision to me, especially given that on their website, Bamboo Labs seem to have environmental impact in mind. Maybe the move was to promote people to using their own brand of filament, which would again raise that whole walled garden argument about this printer. Who knows, but I would definitely love to see some hardware upgrades from Bamboo Lab to solve this problem. You can try and solve the cardboard spool issue yourself by printing off some of these spool rings or reusable spools, but you have to print off quite a few of these if you're loading in and out all the time. And unless you're printing them in PETG or stronger materials, these will eventually wear down or just break. However, that I can live with. My main issue, and it is a big one, is that poop. Now, before I go into this too much, I know it's not specifically the AMS that causes this problem, more the single tool head system that Bamboo Lab printers run. But the main play of the AMS for us is the multicolor or multi-material compatibility in a single print. So I think it's really important we go into this now. From what I've seen on socials and marketplaces, multicolor prints are the main thing people have been using their Bamboo Lab and AMS combos for. And they really do look fantastic, but at what cost? This rocket design is a reasonable size, around 13 centimeters high and 10 centimeters wide. So not big. And in single color, like you can do on all printers, the filament used is around about 125 grams and the time to print is three hours. But introducing multicolor into this, and it leaps the total filament used to 600 grams, and the print time to nearly 34 hours. If we break that filament amount down, it gets even more concerning. You can see in Bamboo Studio, this handy table gives you how much filament is being used for each color. Then it splits down to model and purged. So for this rocket, which isn't even a color change at every layer, the purged filament alone is 379 grams of a 600 gram total. That's well over half your filament that you paid good hard earned money for straight in the bin. And filament is not cheap these days. Bamboo Studio even points this out and gives you an estimated cost per print. So this model would have cost me approximately $14.98 to print in full colour. And that's assuming it prints perfectly first time. Imagine if it got halfway through and just failed. Ah! Yeah, that was pretty tough to take, which leads me on to another issue I have with the waste. The waste channel itself, or that famous poop shoot. You've probably already seen various different poop bins you can print for the Bamboo Lab, which are great designs, but what happened on this print I just showed you was the shoot backed up. Those little chunks of filament or poop that come off during a purge are still quite hot. 
So if you're firing these into a plastic bin, they can stick to the sides, causing a big clump to form just below the chute. And that will eventually back up and jam the print head as it did for us. There are obviously solutions to this, like using a bigger tray or cutting a hole in your worktop and letting it shoot straight into a big bin or just letting it go on your desk. But not everyone has room or time for this. You can also try and play around with the settings in the slicer to reduce the amount of purge on a print. The flushing volume tabs here shows you how much filament will flush for each filament pair. Obviously, darker to lighter filaments flush a lot more to stop any bleeding. I do normally reduce this to around about 0.8 without any issues. You just need to hit calculate to get the new volumes to go in there. You can also flush the filament into the object's supports or infill, but firstly, you need a model to have a decent amount of infill for this or some supports. And secondly, we have had some dodgy results with these settings with bleeding from the darker colors to the lighter colors being quite bad. The big thing that this wasted issue has pointed out to me over the last six months is that the future of multicolor 3D printing still isn't here. The AMS and the Bamboo Lab printers can do it, but whilst a model this size produces this much waste, there is still a lot of room for improvement. So what are our options? Well, we don't really have any at the moment. The MMU and Pallet systems still have the purge issue, and neither are even in the same league as the AMS when it comes to other features and convenience. We have dual tool head printers which can stretch to two colours, but this still isn't what we're after. I would love to say this is where the Prusa XL comes into play, which has just started shipping to its first batch of pre-orders. And don't get me wrong, this machine looks incredible and the multi-tool head system completely eradicates the wastage and time issues the Bamboo Lab has. But the XL will cost you the best part of $4,000 for the five tool head kit. And I assume the majority of printing hobbyists don't have that sort of cash lying around the house. So the $350 question is, is the AMS a waste of money? In my opinion, even though its main appeal of multicolor or material printing on one model has its drawbacks, the AMS is worth every cent. Even if you decide not to print any multicolor prints, the other features on the AMS and the convenience it brings to day-to-day -day printing mean the $350 is still easily worth it. This thing really packs a punch and I hope that other print companies follow suit on an offering of some sort. I think I'd pay the money just to have the auto switching filament feature on my other printers. We'd love to hear your experiences with the AMS and multicolor printing in the comments below. And if you're still here, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe for more from us very soon.